Welcome to the Dr. Mundy Podcast. This is episode 136. We are at the end of June here. School is done. My kids are done with school. They're excited about that. They're already complaining about how short the summer is going to be. But, uh, you know, I guess I remember those days myself. Um, some of your kids must have been off for a couple of weeks. I know the private schools, especially the private schools in New York City, let out a couple of weeks ago. But uh, my kids are Long Island public school kids, and uh, we just got out. And um, it is full on summer, hot as hell, and I'm loving it all. Uh, I told myself years ago that I would never complain about the heat. I would only complain about the cold, and I've kept to my word. Um, so uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful summer wherever it is that you are as well. Um, so this podcast, uh, I want to talk a little bit about... Um, yeah, well, what I talk about most of the time, my medical practice. Um, so many small businesses have uh, a credit card on file policy. Um, many doctor's offices do, many restaurants do, um, many barbershops do. In fact, my kid's barbershop has one. Um, and basically what that requires is when an appointment is made or like just for the sake of say, you know, for a reservation for a restaurant or an appointment for a haircut or appointment for a doctor's office, when an appointment or reservation is made, a credit card is required to hold that appointment. And um, if, as long as like, you know, you cancel within 24 hours, you know, you're never charged like a no-show fee. Um, but if you have a last minute cancellation, you might be subject to that charge. Um, so this is something I've actually had for many, many years as part of my practice. Um, and, you know, we kind of like loosely enforced it. We would just, you know, kind of, kind of uh, we would maintain a credit card file, particularly for patients that had deductibles, et cetera. It's something we started doing, you know, more recently in the last like probably four to five years or maybe a little longer than that. Um, but during COVID, you know, we had to start really kind of enforcing the no-show policy a little bit more intensely. And, and the reason why is, you know, there was a time where I could only see one patient at a time. So we'd drive into, from Long Island to New York City, I'd drive my whole staff in. I was one of a handful of dermatologists, maybe one of like two or three, I think two, to be honest with you, that were open during the height of the pandemic. And where I'd triage my patients during the week. And on Fridays, I'd drive in with my staff and we'd see one patient at a time. And, you know, that's just what we had to do because no one knew what the hell was going on with COVID, you know, for purposes of safety. Um, and it was, you know, if someone were to cancel at the very last second or really just like no show, it was a big problem because I had a backlog of patients that needed to be seen. And if a patient slot was occupied by somebody who didn't show, we were, you know, someone was denied a visit, you know, someone who needed to be seen was told they couldn't be seen because someone else had their slot. And we're just sitting around like twiddling our thumbs. Um, and, you know, as we've been <laughs> coming out of the pandemic, you know, this is a policy that's everywhere. You know, I have to leave a credit card on file at my doctor's office. Um, my wife has to leave a credit card on file at her doctor's office. My staff who see, you know, various other doctors frequently have to leave a credit card on file. Um, when I make a reservation for a restaurant, I'm required to leave a credit card on file. Um, like I said, when I make a an appointment or my wife actually does this but when she makes an appointment for my boys to get a haircut uh, their barber requires a credit card on file and as long as you you know give due notice hey call the day before say hey you know what something came up we're not going to, be able to make it you know we've never i've never had to pay a, a cancellation fee or a no show fee because i always cancel i'm respectful of the establishment that you know we're going to whether it be a restaurant a doctor's office or my kids barber um it's common courtesy you know it's kind of like bad karma just like make an appointment and not show up and um, so, you know, we have been much more um, vigilant about enforcing this policy in the last few years. So, you know, I've been in practice in my New York City office for 15 years. I've been in my Long Island office now for nine years or coming on nine years. And, um, you know, we have patients that we've, you know, before we really started enforcing this policy, we have patients now that we're saying, hey, you know, this is our policy. Um, and we need to keep a credit card and file. We'll explain them to the reason the reasons why all of the information is stored in like, you know, whatever secure encrypted format. Uh, that, you know, Amazon or Apple or any of those other, Google, any of those companies do. In fact, once the credit card information is entered into our electronic medical record system, which I think uses like an Amazon-based technology for its data storage, uh, we can't even access that credit card number. It just basically verifies that that number is, in fact, a real credit card number. And then it's encrypted, you know, so no one can ever see it. And any documents that have a credit card number when patients were filling out the forms are shredded right there on the spot. So there's like no trail left behind whatsoever. Um, and, you know, it's interesting, you know, patients, by and large, you know, we are very 
well um, recognized office. You know, we love our patients. Our patients love us. Um, and, you know, we always do the right thing by our patients and our patients, you know, comment about that on you know, Google reviews, etc. You know, we have tons and tons and tons and tons of amazing reviews from our amazing patients. But what's interesting is, and, and I have two offices, so I spend most of my time in my New York City office and I spend, you know, as the years have gone on, I've started spending less and less time in my Long Island office, partly because of this reason. But um, in my New York City office, it's just, you know, I guess they're folks there are just used to this policy, you know, wherever they go, wherever they go to eat, wherever they go to you know, their other doctors or, you know, their dentists or whatever, you know, hair salons, etc. A lot of folks have this policy. So it's just like, okay, you know, that's yeah, they sign the form and just are abide by the policy. You know, it's never really an issue. But in Long Island, it's, there's a lot of pushback, you know, in Long Island is, you know, a lot more pushback than there is in the city. Um, and listen, I grew up in Long Island, my formative years were here in Long Island, I live in Long Island. Um, but I will tell you, I hate practicing medicine in Long Island because of this sort of strain. You know, any of the negative commentary we may get on, say, like a Google review is always from some billing related issue. And the last few have been about this credit card on file issue. And listen, when I'm running a small business, you know, I have like 10 or so employees. And when someone doesn't show up, you know, we're just sitting around, you know, we're not seeing patients, which is what we do. You know, that's how I generate income for my practice. That's how I pay for my electric bill. That's how I pay my employees salaries. That's how I pay, you know, my malpractice insurance. Um, that's how I pay my rent. And, you know, it's for a small business. And this is something that I think, you know, folks, it's not that hard to understand. Like when you don't show up to your appointment, someone else doesn't get that again appointment that they need. So I have to wait another week or another couple of weeks to be seen when they could be seen in that slot that you didn't show up to. All we ask is, hey, just call us the day before. Let us know, hey, I'm not going to make it in. And the second reason why we keep this uh, a credit card to file is because most of us have deductibles now. I have a deductible. I'm sure many of you out there have a deductible. And when I see a doctor, I know I'm going to have to pay out of pocket. I know I have not met my deductible. You know, we verify this before we see patients. You know, so-and-so has met 1000 out of their $5,000 deductible. So we know there's going to be a bill. And again, we run a very, very small office. You know, my EMR system charges us two bucks for each statement that we send out, which is crazy. I hate my EMR system. Modernizing medicine, I do not like you guys. You guys are a terrible EMR system that are price gouging, uh, you know, small businesses like mine. But I'm kind of stuck with them, right? Like so much of my practice flow is generated around them. And, you know, they just are exploiting us at, at every possible turn. But anyways, that's a separate podcast. Um, so, you know, for us, when we know you have a deductible, we know that you are going to owe us for the visit. You know, you get your explanation of benefits at the same exact time that we do. And, uh, we send out a courtesy text saying, Hey, you know, your credit card file will be charged X amount of dollars. Um, literally based exactly from the same form that you receive from the insurance company. It's really not that complicated, but it allows us to streamline affairs and run things a lot more efficiently rather than sending out a statement, you may have moved, it gets bounced back to us, yada, 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 et cetera. So if you have a credit card on file, we require, if you have a deductible, we absolutely require that you leave a credit card on file. Or in fact, I just will not see you. Um, and the other providers of our practice won't see you as well, because it's just, it, there's way too much administrative burden that's put on my staff. You know, trying to chase folks for um, bills that they owe, that they know they're gonna owe. You know, I always say, it's kind of like going to a restaurant, ordering, um, you know, a filet mignon, enjoying it. And then when the bill comes, you say, eh, you know what? I'm just not going to pay it. I want to postpone paying it. You know, no restaurant would ever let someone leave without paying a bill. In medicine, things are a little bit different. You know, we're paid after a service is rendered. The insurance companies are like literally, you know, like uh, raking us through the coals and, you know, trying to do everything they can not to reimburse us. But when we finally, that, that, that claim is processed. They'll say, okay, you know, the patient this much, this many dollars is applied to the patient's deductible, these many dollars we're going to pay for. And, you know, whatever the insurance company says that the patient is responsible for, we will let you know that, hey, we're going to charge this credit card that we have on file. Um, but I will share a story with you. So last Thursday, we saw a patient in our office that when the patient made the appointment, well, we didn't see the patient, but when the patient called to make the appointment, we said, hey, you're going to need to leave a credit card on file. And, um, he gave us a lot of pushback. You know, he's like, I don't want to leave a credit card file, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, listen, you know, you can't be seen without a credit card file. Two days before before his appointment, we called him. Well, I didn't call him, but my office manager called him and said, hey, listen, you have an appointment on Thursday. 
And uh, this was 48 hours before his appointment said, you know, you will not be able to be seen without leaving a credit card on file. And he was, you know, I wasn't part of the phone call, but my office manager said, listen, like this guy is kind of rude on the phone and he's giving us a lot of pushback about leaving the credit card on file. And, you know, we typically will tell the patient, listen, if you don't leave a credit card on file, you know, you should just cancel your appointment. And, you know, he said, no, I'm going to come in and I will leave my credit card on file when I come in. Okay, whatever, fine. So he showed up for his appointment and my office manager who was there said to him, said, okay, you know, like, as you know, like as we told you when you made your appointment, as we told you 48 hours before you came in for your appointment, you will not be seen if we don't have a credit card on file. And the guy just got unhinged, went absolutely berserk. I wasn't in the office at the time, but you know, he was going crazy. Uh, my wife and I share an office, you know, we share a common waiting area. And like, you know, my wife, one of my wife's patients were getting her teeth cleaned and he was like, what the hell is going on out there? And he kind of popped his head out um, when the patient patient like absolutely berserk. He's like literally was abusive towards my staff, wagging his finger in my office manager's face, yelling and screaming at her. He threatened to call the cops. I don't know what the hell they would have done other than drag him away in handcuffs because he was going so berserk. But um, my office manager said, you know, he's going crazy. Like, what should we do? And I said, well, if he's going that crazy about leaving a credit card file, which is our policy. And then he was forewarned about, you know, I don't want to see a patient who's abusive towards my staff. You know, that's just like, you know, literally I could see what this guy's all about and he doesn't need to be a part of our practice, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, I saw the writing on the wall. So <laughs> the, the, he left. And then the next day, his daughter writes a one-star review on Google, which I'll share. Well, she wrote, first of all, she wrote multiple one-stars review about the same issue and then spammed us with a bunch of other fake reviews, which, you know, obviously is disappointing and, and you know, a little bit disgraceful, to be honest with you. But she wrote, um, let's see, I'm going to go to her first review. She wrote, uh, let's see, where are we? Her name is Zina Mamun, and she wrote this uh, review like a week ago. She said, the new office policy is really unfortunate. Due to recent data breaches from Northwell, we've been hesitant to provide any credit card information on file. My mom and dad both had appointments and were denied service because they refused to put a card on file, which they knew about. Can't agree and get behind a $150 no-show fee that they can order charge on the account. We've warned our other family members, big shame since they've been patients for the last eight years. I advise others to review the new agreements before giving any information. Now, of course, what was failed to be mentioned in that review was that her dad went literally psycho and went berserko on my staff. So those of you who follow me on YouTube know that if you know someone gets a little salty, I have no problem responding back. And what folks generally who leave these types of you know, negative reviews or negative comments, you know, they love to be the last word and they don't like when anyone responds to them. But just because of the nature of this particular interaction, I just could restrain myself. And uh, so I responded. Not sure what the big surprise was here. We've had this policy in place for years. Further, your father was reminded days before his appointment that a credit card on file would be required for him and your mom to be seen. This is a universal policy for all patients, especially those with deductibles, one that all of our thousands of other wonderful patients adhere to. Not sure why your explanation is that you should be receiving your expectations that you should be receiving special accommodation. What was surprising was your father's unruly, deplorable, and shameful tantrum while he was in the office. His disruptive yelling and screaming, threatening to quote unquote call the cops, not sure what they would have done other than haul him away in handcuffs, and trying to intimidate my poor receptionist, a young woman, probably your age or even younger, by screaming and angrily wagging his finger in her face was uncivilized, unfortunate, and unbecoming. Abusive behavior towards my lovely staff is never tolerated. Your parents are discharged from my care. You will be receiving a official notification shortly. Um, and then I went back and forth and she responded to that. And I responded to that, but it was just sort of this, you know, and then she spammed me, like I said, with a bunch of reviews. Um, listen, that's our policy. I'm running a small business and, you know, we have to have policies that enable us to take care of our wonderful patients and make sure folks show up to their appointments or at least have the courtesy to call us and say, hey, we're not going to come in for your, for, uh, we're not gonna be able to make it to your appointment. Give us a day's notice so that we can call someone else who's waiting for an appointment. We've been waiting weeks to get in and say, hey, a spot opened up and you can, you know, come in tomorrow. We have this availability. It's, uh, you know, it's not this indiscriminate policy where we're just like charging credit cards left and right. In fact, we very rarely even charge anyone a no-show fee. We usually will give them a warning unless they're a serial offender 
or unless they're just a complete asshole. And then, you know, we will take the liberty to charge them. But, you know, most of our patients are absolutely wonderful, nice people. Um, and we say, hey, listen, you know, this is why we have this policy. We'll give you a pass, but next time we're going to have to ding you if you no show on us. And um, I think it's a very reasonable policy, one that all of the providers that I go to and the restaurants that I eat and the barbershop that my kids go to, everyone has the same policy, which makes sense. So that's a little background. And like I said, for some reason, it, there's a disproportionate amount of um, grievance with this policy in my Long Island office, which is why I actually only see patients in Long Island for three hours a week. I've whittled it down to that because it's just a lot of headache. Um, here uh, in my Long Island office and I spent I've schlepped three hours round trip to my New York City office you know multiple days a week just because it's just a more um, pleasurable experience for me as a doctor um, so that's why we have a credit card on policy credit card on file policy I hope that sheds a little bit light uh, for those of you who are questioning the policy that your doctors or restaurants in your neighborhood or hair salons or barber shops or nail salons why a small business would have such a policy in place. So with that, I hope you all have a wonderful, restful weekend and are just ready to crush the week ahead. Let's get it.